JRock here, bringing you our first Warframe video. This week we are going to take an in-depth look at Rhino. So uh, these videos are going to kind of serve to pick up where AKA Mike B left off while he did a general and hilarious overview of the frames, kind of starting impressions. This is going to delve into endgame builds, uh, the ins and outs of the frame, and uh, I'm going to throw in some boss runs too for the hell of it maybe some challenges on later later videos uh, but for now um, I'm just gonna start this off with a boss run uh, I'll show you the builds I'm rocking uh, these this video is a little bit old some of the stuff is out of date um, I believe I recorded this a few days after the Penta came out um, but uh, regardless I will still give you my current impressions on a lot of these weapons uh, let's uh, let's check out these builds um, this one is, yeah, this Penta is old. I've formed it since, and it is quite, quite good. Uh, Brack, I finished. It only took, uh, three Formas, and it's quite solid. It's missing one point off of Puncture, but, uh, I will post the build video specifically on the Brack later. Um, and there's the trusty Galantine, and gotta thank you guys recording this video I noticed I was missing two mods for no reason off my sentinel so let's just pop those back on and I'll be bringing the sweeper uh, two formas set this one up for me uh, it's missing one on the chilling grass but eh, don't need to go that overboard uh, but I believe since this video, or maybe even before this video, they nerfed it a little bit. It, it doesn't matter. It's still insanely DPS. That was just a quick glimpse at my utility build that I was using for this run. I just, uh, not going to really fully discuss all those builds. Just popping them up there in case anybody wants to pause and check them out. So yeah, let's get to this boss run. Oh, wait. Let's get rid of any onlookers. Alright, so let's get our asses to this boss. I really do like the unique action on the Penta. Being able to get in that grenade when you want, the pop shots are very satisfying. And um, after forming it once, um, I'm not quite sure how the full build is going to look, but it's it's very powerful and it it seems to hit everything very strongly almost regardless of what you put on it I haven't had problems one-shotting stuff across all three factions um, pretty pretty respectably with this mini nade launcher I do hope they do add sticky grenade capabilities to it because that would be a blast but let's get to this boss So, the Jackal, uh, the main mechanics on this, oh, whoa, sudden potato, alright, why not? So yeah, the mechanics on this are DPS the legs to avoid the giant AoE, and then DPS the base when he's, oh, well, he's dead. I guess they nerfed this guy, or... Maybe it's because I'm solo. Either way, perhaps we will add another boss kill after this one, Target when down. it's all said and done. But complete. let us move on to the builds. To For our first build, I'm going to give you more mod theory or leveling theory, as opposed to a straight linear build. This is going to be designed to funnel quick affinity to your Warframe to get it past the first you know, 10 or so levels and get it out of the squishy territory. Start stacking the really useful mods on it. So obviously we're going to start with a maxed out aura that matches polarity for the double points. Uh, rifle amp is your 
really go to only real option here. You could go with Steel Charge if you don't have Rifle Amp, uh, but it's definitely what you want. Uh, this is, gives us 14 points, so I personally would start with both maxed out Iron Skin and Stomp. Iron Skin just lets you do pretty much whatever you want on Rhino up till much later level content. If you're building this frame early, uh, you, it's just it's an invaluable skill, and you'll see why. It's 1,200 damage at max level. There's no duration on it. It just stays until it's broken, and then you can recast it. Uh, it's pretty cheap, too. Um, then, obviously, Rhino Stomp uh, is mandatory. Also, I would say max level. It does pretty respectable damage uh, without any boost to it, uh, and I think it has the highest in-game range of an ult, or at least it did, that may not be true anymore, but 25 meters. So the core of any leveling build is going to be an ult, an AoE ult of some variety. Um, so this one, Rhino Stomp, is perfect. So spamming that away is going to generate you a lot of quick affinity. Um, and then if you want, uh, you can slap on Rhino Charge, uh, unleveled, it's free now, they reduce the cost, so if you don't have a movement weapon on, like Zorans or something, it's not terrible, it's cheap, uh, it's got a little bit of knockdown and stun on it as well, I believe, one or the other perhaps. Either way, that'll leave us with, uh, three points to play with, and, uh, so here you can fit in... Uh, either vitality or redirection depending on what uh, what you have leveled or what you have space for if perhaps your rifle amp isn't max uh, either one is going to give you some leeway to recast that iron skin if you know you're in the thick of it and a bunch of people a bunch of mobs are giving you shit you can uh, just gives you a little bit more base to work with uh, this this is about what I would go into the first match with and just Something like defense or mobile defense, where you've got a lot of opportunities to spam that stomp, will get you quite a few levels when you come out of the end of it, and then you can uh, start moving mods onto it more for maximizing the the kills from stomp. First would be obviously either stretch or flow. Um, they're both equally viable depending on what you're running. Uh, flow, maybe if it's higher level content and you want more of a pool of iron skins. Uh, stretch if you just want to stomp to just ruin the map. That 25 meter in game, the 25 meter range plus stretch is, is quite vicious and will hit pretty much all of your defense area if you're guarding a pod or a terminal. I've left out uh, discussing roar so far uh, because I'm going to go into it more in depth uh, later in an endgame build in the video, but uh, it is definitely viable. It adds uh, at max 50% uh, damage to everybody under the buff, including yourself. Uh, lasts a decent length of time. It's great for leveling weapons, which is what I'm going to do with the later build. Um, it's very heavily nerfed by fleeting expertise, which is where I usually go as soon as possible on Rhino. The decrease to the cost on stomp and iron skin is just amazing and the quicker uh the shorter the stun on rhino stomp the quicker you can recast it and i find that to be uh really really awesome if anything fleeting buffs stomp instead of nerfing it with the duration obviously roar and charge are negatively impacted with it and that's why i tend to cut them um but either way this is going to give you a build that's just quick leveling and last but probably should have been first is the vanguard rhino helmet rhino's only flaw is he is slow but once he's got this helmet on he's actually quite fast i haven't looked at the overall rankings recently but i know he's he's faster than he should be with just that helmet and now what you more than likely clicked this video for or at least what i would have clicked this video for the end game builds for rhino my first build is my favorite, and uh, I would classify this as a utility build. A quick form of tip before we get started for any uh, any of the newer players. Um, your first forma on any Warframe should always be one of the skill polarities, even if you plan on keeping all four skills. And that's simply because the polarity is only saving you one point, and mathematically it just doesn't make sense. It would be better to put that on a blank slot 
and then move any any other polarity to that to that skill. So that should be where you form a first, unless you're changing uh, perhaps a blank or a slot. So utility build. Now obvious stuff is obvious here. I uh, shouldn't have to go into too much detail on most of it, but the skills, the uh, the shield and HP base maxed out, the fleeting expertise, um, stretch and flow are obviously pretty much going to be on everything. Um, now, fleeting expertise and streamline I use here together to hit the 75% energy cap. So, uh, iron skin or stomp is available always if you've got the energy. Obviously, minimal amount of energy for each of them is very, very useful. Um, the places where you can change this up, obviously, uh, Thief's Wit is a personal preference. I really like to not miss uh, mods specifically. Um, but there's two points extra here you could put on a fortitude or something else um, enemy sense as well for me is about it's really about carrying um, this build will take any group of players sans maybe uh, not having a frost on a high level defense with corpus or grenier where they're ranging your pod to death you can just carry anybody um, you can tune it to how you like it if you want maybe fortitude over enemy sense or if you want a sure-footed for in between the iron skins if you're worried about getting knocked down. Um, you can even uh, go overextended um, instead of stretch if you don't mind the reduction in damage to stomp. It just becomes more like a quick stun for resing people. Um, uh, that's another big thing about this build. Some people may cut vitality. I keep it uh, because it's really about uh, saving people sometimes when you need it. You need as much buffer between you and standing there static taking a lot of DPS. This next build is designed for uh, survival or defense missions where the first build just just won't cut it. We're talking things like hour, two hour plus survival missions or 80 wave defenses if you're trying to break records or something like that. I still need to decide where I want to place the second forma, and if you guys have any recommendations for that, please uh, leave it in the comments or shoot us an email, uh, which I will put in the description. So the key difference for this build is that we're going to cut Streamline and Deep Swit for Quick Thinking and Roar. I also switched out Enemy Sense for Sure-Footed. More than likely someone on your team would have the Enemy Radar Aura. I picked Sure-Footed for uh, Knockdown Protection in between Iron Skin or while Resing. Even though Roar is nerfed somewhat by fleeting expertise, uh, it's still worth bringing with and really the only thing that'll fit in this build with only one Forma. And it's worth bringing simply because of the extra DPS it adds to the party. Even though it is reduced by 60% because it's 60% cheaper, it's functionally the same, you just have to cast it over and over again and it gets obnoxious. But you're going to be seriously glad you have it once you get to the later times, same with quick thinking. The last build isn't too fancy, but it is equally as awesome as the first two, and it is designed around leveling weapons, and it's just basically max duration that you want to stack to roar, uh, simply because uh, Rhino, in my opinion, steals the least affinity from the weapons you're leveling, as long as you just stick to Iron Skin and Roar, and the 50% boost makes leveling low level or trash weapons a lot easier. So yeah, just stack as much duration as you really want to for your Roar. Uh, you could cut continuity for a, a different utility mod if you wanted. Uh, it's really your call. This build isn't set in stone or anything, it's more just dedicated to the idea of leveling weapons easily. Well, that's all the talking I feel like doing, so... If you like this video, let me know, and if you've got any suggestions or requests for the next video, uh, I think I'm probably going to do Nyx, or maybe take a look at a weapon, maybe Brack. Uh, just let me know. Leave it in the comment, or send it to the email, and we will see you next week.